Thanks for tuning in to this ISO Byte video series where we bring you bite-sized ISO videos. In this series, we'll talk about the updates to the ISO 27001 framework issued in the 2022 update. We'll cover all of the Annex A controls, both the new controls as well as the existing ones to make sure that you have everything you need to implement them effectively in your organization. In this video, we'll cover information protection controls. The first control we'll talk about is 5.12, classification of information. The control reads, information should be classified according to the information security needs of the organization based on confidentiality, integrity, availability, and relevant interested party requirements. What this control implies is that you should sit down and determine what the necessary classifications of data are. It could be something as simple as public, restricted, confidential, high, medium, low, or it could be much more complicated depending on your regulatory and contractual needs. Spend the time to articulate what those classification schemes should be and make sure that you are then ready to apply them. And that's where the next control comes in, 5.13, labeling of information. The control says an appropriate set of procedures for information labeling should be developed and implemented in accordance with the information classification scheme adopted by the organization. Based on the, the classification scheme that you came up with in 5.12, you now need to develop a process to apply labels to relevant assets and information systems to ensure that it reflects the appropriate data classification. These are absolutely necessary and are prerequisites to the control we talked about in a previous video, which is data handling. So in order to handle data appropriately, you need to know what the classification of that data is and also be aware of what that implies with regards to how you should handle that data. So classification of information, labeling of information, and handling procedures all work together. The next control is 5.34, privacy and protection of PII. The control states the organization should identify and meet the requirements regarding preservation of privacy and protection of PII according to applicable laws and regulations and contractual requirements. Many organizations are finding themselves beholden to regulations such as CPRA, GDPR, and many other local privacy regulations. You need to determine which ones you are act actually beholden to and understand the requirements of those. ISO simply wants to know that you have determined what those are and that you are applying the necessary controls to address them within your ISMS. If you want to implement a more robust privacy management system, I'd recommend checking out ISO 27701. That is another management system that is much more robust and is strictly focused on the privacy of information. The next control is 8.10, information deletion. This is a new control and the control reads, information stored in information systems and devices should be deleted when no longer required. To me, that's fairly straightforward in terms of understanding what the control wants. However, it's gonna be much more difficult to implement in practice. So what this implies is that you need to sit down and understand what is the true retention period that you need to apply to the different types of data that you collect. Consider all of your data, things such as client data, uh, sensitive documents, uh, could even be emails, uh, client communications, correspondences, things like that. Apply a reasonable estimate of how long you think you're going to need to retain that data and then gut check those estimates against any contractual requirements or any regulatory or compliance related requirements. The next control is also a new one. It's 8.11, data masking. So this control says that data masking should be used in accordance with the organization's topic specific policy on access control and business requirements, taking legal requirements into consideration. This control is essentially encouraging pseudonymization. So what ISO is wanting you to do with this control is basically mask any data that could be construed as PII where possible. So making sure that you're taking extra precaution to not only restrict access to PII, but also restrict the actual readability of PII to folks who may need to access the data but not actually know the specifics of the data. So this is a really cool control in my opinion, uh, but it is gonna take some time to learn to implement. The next control is uh, yet another new control. It's 8.12, data leakage prevention. We've all heard of DLP solutions. Uh, we may have even spent a lot of time trying to implement DLP solutions. This one is going to be uh, very interesting to see how it evolves in my opinion, but uh, over time, I think that you're gonna see organizations who 
move away from just simply buying a tool and flipping a switch because those tend to interrupt business processes to the extent that it's not acceptable. And I think you're going to see businesses really lean into understanding, well, what are the actual mechanisms that could be used to leak data? And applying much more topic specific controls that are more granular and tactical, but that are actually more effective at implementing data, le data leakage prevention controls. So I'm excited to see how that one evolves. The last one we'll talk about is test information. The control states test information should be appropriately selected, protected, and managed. So three words, selected, protected, and managed. So when you're testing your systems, you need to make sure that you're selecting adequate and appropriate data to truly test all the security requirements as well as the functionality requirements. You need to make sure you're protecting that data based on what it is, based on the fact that it can be used by malicious parties in malicious ways. Um, if you're using anything that's even close to resembling production data, I would recommend simply testing that in an environment that is uh, as controlled and restricted and protected as production. Um, and then the last one is managed. What that means is that the life cycle of that data set should be managed. So making sure that you are not only handling that data, moving that data, uh, implementing that data into certain places to be able to be used for testing, but also deleting that data in a reasonable time and where possible. I think a lot of organizations are guilty of hanging on to test data for way too long. So I think this control will hopefully prompt a lot of organizations to investigate where is my test data, how long are we keeping it, and are we protecting it adequately? Thanks for tuning in to this ISO Byte video series. If you'd like to learn more about updates to the framework, check out a link in the description below to a white paper we've written. Also, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great content like this. Look for us on LinkedIn, and also check out our website at risk360.com to learn more about how Risk360 may be able to help you achieve your security and compliance goals.